Today, I'm going to show you how to create this decorative text design for print on demand using Adobe Illustrator. In order to create these sorts of designs, we actually need a specific type of font that has something that's often referred to as extras or bonus doodles. So here is one that I would recommend on Creative Fabrica and it's called Butter and Garlic. As you can see by this example, it can look really, really nice. It's a script font and it has, as you can see down here, also a sans variation and extras. If we scroll through these example mockups right here, we can see the alphabet. We can see some more design examples. This is the sans serif font right there. It's sort of handwritten, uh, the style of it. And here's another really nice example. Now, this is only one option. There is other fonts like this. They're a little bit harder to find. You often find them within actual script font sections. Here's an overview of the free doodles as well. I will leave this font in the description down below. And I've also got an alternative, which is this this one right here by Adobe Fonts. Now this is really unuseful if you've already got an Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop subscription because oftentimes you get the fonts included. I don't know if you need a Creative Cloud subscription. To be honest, that is what I have personally and I do get access to these fonts. So Good Life is one that I've used a lot in the past. It has multiple different font styles and also these extras included. So um, here's a quick overview of the styles. So we've got, if we make this bigger, we've got brush, we've got a script version, condensed, sans and different serif options. And then the extras right here. Here is a quick example of some of the extras that I've used quite a bit. So this option right here is one that you can easily mirror and use um, around text. Uh, these arrows are quite nice and this little, whatever you want to call it, then you get certain bits of text that are often used like and and of and with that sort of stuff and you have some presets there in the extras once again check out good life on adobe fonts if you have a subscription that includes their font library or use that other font from creative fabrica which is linked down below in the description so here we are inside of illustrator this is a design i created with garlic and butter the other day here's another variation with a different color scheme and i wanted to quickly explain to you how these fonts actually work uh, here we've got a bit of text in myriad pro and if we change this to butter and garlic right here the normal font obviously we get the script version then we've got um, cute caps right here which is the sans serif and we've also got butter and garlic bonus so once you click into this you'll notice whatever letter you press you will get a different little symbol that pops up if you hold down shift you know if you do a capital a you will get a different result than a lowercase a uh, in this case so those are both a's right there now one quick tip is just typing out the entire alphabet at once like i've done right here and then expanding the shapes so you can easily move these around by the way you also get different shapes for the numbers like one two three four other symbols like the brackets etc can also give you results right here but as you can see we've got a variety of very very nice shapes that we can use to decorate a text and the good thing is because it's included in the font the shapes actually match the font perfectly right they they belong together and there's also a bonus doodle file that you get an adobe illustrator file or you can download an svg with this font that also holds some additional graphics right here i don't think all of these are included in the actual font version right so this is just an adobe illustrator file um, with extra graphics essentially which you can also use you don't have to use both you can just use one of these options i just wanted to show you that that also comes with a font but moving back here let's actually drag and drop um, or drag these all over to a new app board. I downloaded some phrases right here for a coffee theme design from the Vexels quote generator. I'm gonna use one of these now and create a design from scratch. So you can sort of walk through the process with me and see how I do this. Um, let's just go with the first phrase. I quite like that one. Obviously you can do this for other niches as well. You don't have to just do it for coffee. The graphics, some of these graphics do match coffee quite well, but most of them you can use for pretty much any niche. So let's change the color right here and start off with one of these butter and garlic fonts. Let's start off with caps version right here because that one is nice and easy to read. And let's put life begins at the top. Let's put coffee at the bottom. By the way, you get a different option right here for each letter when you do capital and lowercase they do all appear capital but there is still variation in the letters if you want to mess around with them this is the start of the layout i suppose life begins and then after in the middle could be the other font option which is this one right here 
don't like how that T looks. So you can also adjust this right here with glyphs and get different variations. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that T. So in this case, I think I prefer to use this font for the middle. And let's see if we can change this one right here to the scripty option, and make that look nice. That does look a bit better. I've begins after coffee. And in this case, I do like to keep some gaps next to some of the words because that's what we're going to fill in with our bonus graphics right here or extras. We can move this up a bit. I'm just looking at the, the line of the C right here and the F's and the spacing compared to the word after. So I don't want to have like a massive gap. I want them to be relatively even. So what can we do in terms of glyphs right here? Do any of these look good? And that's a bit bit large maybe this e looks cool the c does not have any glyphs unfortunately and i believe these are the ones we can just leave the same yeah let's leave those the same and let's start actually filling out some of the empty space with the decorative extras let's get rid of all this text and move up all of these graphics right here so first of all I want to move something next to after right here and I do recommend choosing things that you can easily sort of mirror and stick to some sort of symmetry. So in this case, um, once you've got the first piece aligned, you can hold down alt on your keyboard. Then as you can see, your arrows can change there. You can then click and drag and hold down shift while dragging to stay in line with the previous graphic, with the graphic on the left. Then once we're over here, we can start rotating this and you will notice while rotating, if you hold down shift, it'll be easier to have this a turn by 180 degrees. So that's a good start, I think. And now let's carry on with the outside and some of these other gaps right here. What else can we do? I think these little stars look quite good. So where can we put these? We could put them here, but I would rather have them repeated somewhere. So if any of your text gets in your way, just select all the text, click control two on your keyboard, and then it will be locked and you will have an easier time moving things around and highlighting stuff without the text getting in the way. So let's actually maybe move this up to the top right here. Um, I want to mirror this now rather than rotate. Right, you could rotate it, but what if we want to reflect it, right? We can hold down O on a keyboard that will bring up the reflect tool. And then anyone on the artboard, you can just click and drag and hold down shift again. And there we go, that's reflected those little shiny star symbols right there. Okay, cool. What about the top and the bottom? There is some shapes that work quite well for the top and bottom. Where are they? This one right here. I really like this one because you can easily place that one um, on top like this. Also, perhaps at the bottom. Let's see if it works underneath this. I'm going to use just the rotate tool in this case. Um, hmm. The F's are sort of off to the side of it. So you could place it like that, but it's off center. If we, if we try and find the center here, let's align this to the center of the artboard. Pull out a ruler. So control R brings up the rulers and line it up with the center. Then uh, that actually works okay. Maybe over to the right a little bit. There we go. You just have to play around a bit to try and balance this out. Then just carry on looking through the shapes. You won't always do it first try that it looks good. I don't know if that actually looks nice. I'm not sure. Um, let's try a different one. Let's try this option. Hmm. I'm not sure about that one, but let's just carry on. Um, we could also start adding some coffee mugs right here because that is the theme of this design. Would it work there? No, that's too small. Like you can hardly see this when you zoom out. I uh, can hardly make out the actual coffee mug. So we'll have to make it a bit bigger. We could have this um, at the top and sort of create some symmetry here by once again, copying it over and reflecting it with a reflect tool by hitting O and dragging it like this. So there we go. If you ever want to align two objects like this that are mirrored to the center, group them both by holding down control G on your keyboard. Now this is grouped and we can head up to this right here, make sure it's aligned to artboard and then align this to the center. So there we go, got the coffee mugs sorted out. Let's add a few of these right here as well. Try and align them somewhat to the text at the bottom. And this part of the leaf goes or follows the shape of the E quite nicely. So I think that works. Let's copy it over, reflect it once again with O. Does it work? it does actually work somewhat, fills that space out nicely. So once again, what we can do is we can group these two and align them to center. And there we go. We've got that bottom bit filled out as well. Sometimes you'll just have to zoom out and look at the design with a fresh set of eyes and see where are we still lacking some shapes 
Um, I think here's a bit of a gap that might need to be filled. I do think maybe the coffee mugs are slightly too overbearing, slightly too big. So let's make those a tad smaller. Yep, I think that works. Let's find something to put over here into these corners. How about some heart shapes, perhaps? Let's copy these. There we go. Do they look good? I'm not sure. They sort of compete with these stars at the top. So let's maybe try one of these little thingies right here. They can look quite good. I used them in the other design and you can easily sort of place them around the edge of your design like this. All right, there we go. I think that looks a bit better than the hearts before. Copy this over, hit O, reflect it like this. And there we go. Let's perhaps move these up a little bit. And now I think the layout is somewhat balanced. I would now just go ahead and actually unlock the text as well because that's still locked as you can see you can select it so hit Control alt t on your keyboard to unlock everything let's actually move these shapes to the side a bit and let's begin first of all outlining the text so we can align it to the center as well and make sure everything is aligned properly so let's begin with this right here then after and coffee yeah, that has to be moved to tad as well. And now make sure some of these shapes are also properly aligned to the center of the artboard. And then you might still have to move some things around. Like here in this case, it's getting a bit close to the C, in my opinion. So let's move this up a tad with the arrows. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just aligning some things to the center of the artboard. And then we are done with this design. I think that looks a lot nicer than just having plain text and we can obviously easily create color variations. What I like to do in these cases uh, for these sorts of designs is leaving the actual text at a bright color. A quick tip here is to group the text. I mean, you don't have to, but you can just lock it with control two. So there we go, it's all locked. Now you can select all of the shapes, excluding the text right here, and you can just select a new color. So let's go with um, some sort of brown just to suit the coffee niche. There we go. Or you could make another variation if we unlock all of these shapes right here again, draw this artboard over, we could make another variation, lock the text, and I think a nice little green tone of color would work too. There we go. That does look really cool. And now we've got an interesting looking design where the text still stands out, even though we've added quite a lot of decorative elements to this. Again, it's quite a bit of trial and error. And perhaps I could have added something small into this gap right here as well and made this a tad smaller. It's just messing around and finding some sort of balance. And a lot of the objects, if you, you know, mirror them, and if you have some symmetry between the left and right, then they create quite a nice balanced design. So yeah, definitely check out the page on Creative Fabrica for inspiration as well. Those designs looked amazing, probably a lot better than my examples right here. And have fun creating these designs. They might not work for every single niche. Like if it's a very masculine type of sport or whatever, then these designs might not work. But I think in many cases, you can keep this in the back of your mind to create some really interesting looking text designs. If you want to expand your illustrator skills, then make sure to check out this video next where I show you how to create horizontal sunset t-shirt designs.